Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. I just want to show this chart because I had a question about it. I always show it uh, here in the den uh, before the show starts or even during the show. This is the uh, this is the e mini. He has the one minute chart. So you can see I had a red a red letter here. I have the red letter because in the futures, because they're trading quarter points, sometimes you get parallel highs. And if there's a little wiggle in the RSI, the Rental Strength Index, or on the unbalanced volume or the MACD, um, I tend to take that as a, as a if it's with two bars of parallel highs and then the third bar goes to a higher high, <clears throat> I say, I want to be a little ahead of the game. So maybe that is an A, and I'll make it red to say, hey, that's not your official thing. That's your unofficial way of looking at it. And then I can get to a D, and that D would normally be a C, let's say, and or a B, but it would be a letter that isn't yet the fourth highest peak, which is a peak D. But I'm prepared for anything at that stage. And all you have to do is raise your stop or use the, in this case, the nine period moving average, which is still very positive. And now, officially, I move everything up to actual peaks. And here we are making a peak D and now leg E with the E mini up $2 at 4 48.22.25. Uh, Isn't that interesting? Um, and this is after days and days and days. It's eight. There were eight days of higher highs in the Dow. Eight consecutive days, not just higher highs, really much, much higher highs. I was anticipating, still anticipating, that there'd be some kind of a, just a hiatus here today to see what happens. But I do have one, um, one index that I've used, or sector, or an ETF, that I've used as kind of a benchmark to say the upside is slowing down a little bit. So we grabbed a very short, um, very small trading position, aggressively short, uh, only as a trade. And that's just for folks of my subscribers, uh, for my subscribers who really like to, they enjoy. I believe very strongly that you need never to be afraid of markets going down or going up. You should treat them equally. Going down, the patterns are the same except in reverse. So you cannot be afraid when you've got a powerful move like this, then to actually have to be brazen enough to be to have the chutzpah, to have the cheek, to actually decide to short means that you've got to have very tight stops. You've got to know exactly what you're doing and you have to be very strict on your rules. And it is going against the trend. I wonder if I can show this chart here. I'll be showing it again for my subscribers. This is in my CD book, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, which, let me just get this, roll it, roll it. Maybe I can find it here. I think I'll be able to see it. Oh, I hope I can see it. Uh, there it is. So the question is, what do you do when a market's going up? Well, you've got to identify the trend and then trade with the trend, unless you're like an intraday or intra intra week, uh, intra whatever it is, you know that the trend is up, but you're prepared to have quick pullbacks and to actually trade those pullbacks. Does this look right? No, this is a rising trend with higher highs and higher lows. So therefore, the arrow with the with the with the arrow here pointing down, that's wrong. Unless you're, as I say, a very short-term trader, but the trend will save you if you do the wrong thing in the right trend, um, the tide going out or going coming in is going to save you. Look, going on the way down, you can have those quick pop-ups. We often try to do this sort of thing going against the trend. We just did it today. Not sure if it'll work out. It did work out for, at this point, it is working out, but that's not the point. The point is that it will be a counter-trend move for people who are, uh, have the agility, have the wherewithal to be able to withstand that they might be wrong. But if they're right, there'll be a really quick, nice profit. So in this case, you're going down. But wait a minute, isn't doesn't this look so much better? Here's your trend going up. There's your arrow going up. Here's your trend going down. 
Here's your arrow going down. And you can see the technicals. Look, the MACD, the, his, the histogram and the slow moving average is positive. On the way down, it is negative. And what is the price? This is the General Motors back in 2002 at 40, um, uh, at 30. So that was, uh, this I, doesn't matter. Charles has tried to just use this as a historical uh, a kind of a, a benchmark of your thinking. All right, with that said, um, what am I going to deal with this afternoon? I'm going to deal with a whole bunch of things. Uh, I'm going to talk about, let me just get this right here. So to be, to be discussed and covered are there sectors that lag but could now lead, especially the very low price stocks? I'm not just doing the low price stocks, but the low price stocks, they were quite high price stocks during the smash over the last year and a half or so. Some of them have really been just clobbered. And now they've had a pretty decent ra rally. But when you look at the monthly chart, the move might just be starting. Um, Either that or I want to talk about some of the sectors that maybe have had a really good rally, but they're going to peter out. Their strength is going to wane and the others are going to take over. So that's what I'll talk about. Which sectors are rallying that might not have followed through? Um, how important are the financial brokerage? One of the reasons why we went back into one of our banking stocks, our multinational uh, banking stocks is, um, and these are called the money center banks, is because it's really important for a rally, as far as I'm concerned, maybe that might not be the consensus, but that's my consensus, is that to see a strong rally that has the, the, the temerity, that has the gumption, that's able to withstand any sudden news-related drops, you want to see the financials moving higher. It's a really important, together with the transport. So here's the XLF, um, not a bad rally, but it's still only halfway into the, the, the highs that were made back in um, this, uh, January of 2022, and the low that was made in 22. Um, so it's a very nice, and it is a leg D in the weekly, and it's a leg, it's a peak F in the daily. So yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of stalling motion perhaps here, but what's really important is that the KRE, and I'll talk about the, I'm talking about relationships again today for those of you who, who like to look at good quality, positions that were weak and that have now strengthened. And here's the KRE. This is, this is not as good looking chart as the XLF. It's a much weaker chart, but the weekly chart is actually improving a lot. It's right. It's testing the 200 period moving averages, the S&P regional banking ETF. You want the regional banks. You want those banks in middle America. Uh, it doesn't have to be middle America. I'm talking about the banks in your local banks. You want them to be participating. Some of them are uh, maybe just on the edge of being just regional banks, but in, in their financials. But anyway, that's what you want to see. Here's the other thing that I'm looking at. Um, how about the different sectors? The I, IAI, which is the broker dealer, which we've been long since 2020. Look at this at 45, it's at 106, and it's doing really nicely. Um, but it hasn't made the all-time high of 116. Surely the brokerage area is going to do really well if there's another whole phase to the upside coming early this year. Yeah, we want to be looking at this. We want to say, what is it telling us? And which, which brokerage stocks are the ones that you want to get into? I'll be back in a moment with Basil Chapman. Guys, that's the best tech up to come back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. 
Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. I know a couple of comments here. Uh, one is, uh, could I look at uh, follow up on UBS? Could I look at the other thing? Yep. Uh, Johnson. Uh, well, the financials bullish percentage is at eighty six. Uh, not sure I want to be going along financials at this point. I'm looking at FAS, FAS, and FAZ. FAZ has been crushed. Yep. So I'm absolutely in your camp right now saying there are, on any basis that I'm looking at many of these charts, they are extremely overboard. And that's why I'm thinking that there's going to be two to three phases over the next um, six, maybe even eight weeks. And I'm going to be discussing that uh, in my in my uh, sh uh, sh webinar this afternoon because I got a little work to do before I get there. I, I want to go through a couple of charts, but I also look at this and I say on the short term, I'm absolutely looking at this and I'm saying on the very short term, we are getting extremely overbought. On now it's on a tactical level, but the stochastic is still holding at 87. It's come down quite sharply until it goes under 80. This is doing well. The single leg up in the weekly chart, I've got it as a D, but in some cases, it's actually an A. So I'm anticipating we're going to maybe use a choppy sideways pattern. That's one. Or we have a very sudden, quick, one of those late December or early January, sudden slice of the downside for who knows what the reason could be. Uh, and then we stabilize and then we start looking at what can now re reignite the upside for the stocks that were very weak, had a fantastic uh, uh, November into December. Are they ready for another move up? And I'm going to include some of the financials there. But on a, it doesn't mean that at 86 it has to get crushed. It just means very choppy. There should be some kind of a consolidation. Uh, wh why? Because it could come down very quickly from 86 to 78. 78 not as bad as 86, and then it could go even higher. So that's a possibility. So I'm just saying I'm not in the camp right now that say that's why I've got buys for my subscribers much lower down in some of the some of the issues. But you can't deny that buying keeps coming in, John. 
And that's the reason. And, and also, it's a very, not all of them doing the same. Look, here's JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan, almost at all time highs at 100. Uh, today, as I've been talking, is 169 is the high. New leg E, and this is a new, new uh, notation. And in the weekly chart, E or a brand new A. And they see in the weekly 172. It's only, I mean, just a hop, skip, and a jump away from an all time high. And yet you can, let's go to UB. Uh, was it USB? USB. A US banker. Oh, I remember. I had this all notated so fantastically. And then I had to shut down. And I had to go to, I had to go to, what do I always do? I go to um, backup and restore. Therefore, I had to go to the save from the previous night. So I lost all my UBS notations. But, uh, USB. Now, this is the United States Bank Corp. And it was up here, and I said, I would wait for the gap to be filled. I'd even wait for a little bit more if you hadn't got any position. If it was a brand new position, if you're in the position, I said, take a little bit off money management. But if you want to start a new position or to add to, see how the gap, if it gets filled, how much gets filled, and then let's look at it again. So that's exactly where we are at 43.77. And I said, the 200 period moving average should be resistance. It's been that before. Look at that fantastic four bars that couldn't break above two, close above 200. The 200 period moving average back in January of this year. Uh, it's a weekly chart, so maybe it was February. And then it plunged from the 47s down to the 20, 27s. And then it ran back up peak A. Look, yes, peak A. Yes, B. Yes, C. And yes, D. So there it is. Uh, D, right at what was the stock we were looking at just now? Uh, right at PD, at resistance, at the 200 period moving average. Yeah, there it is. So another question. So I hope that helps you. I, and as I say, I'm, when you look at stocks like this, only in a, a power move, one that is almost like uh, a rally of, of last resort, where just people throw money at the market. I don't see this now as that particular phase. I just see this as an extremely overbought level. We got all those things that you need to to have this trigger to the upside. You had the lower rates. You had the uh, you had uh, the dollar moving down, and you had a lot of shorts. And that's the short covering press brand brand new buying. And now I think we just at the end of that we're getting a little bit tired, but a little tired is not. Oh my God! I see a crash coming at this particular point. A lot of ha things have to happen to get the whole uh, crash material in the background. And as I said before. My uh, dark news cloud cover says, I see a few little clouds. They're getting a little darker up there in the sky. I don't see anything but uh, anything more than that. Then I'll just do a Zip's question about ANET. Wow, I wonder if I've got this all updated. I know I did it yesterday. Oh, I have to redo it. So that was an E. So ANET is uh, A-N-E-T, Arista Networks, all-time high three days ago. Leg E in the monthly chart, a leg F, it could be an alternate count, but right now I'm just calling this an F for the daily chart. This could be one of those A, maybe it's an F. F says, be careful. A says, are you kidding? You want to buy everything you can. So we don't have to consider that just at the moment because it broke that inside track repellent zone. That's now propellant zone in the 218s. It's a 236. And let's just see what the count is. Yeah, you've got D right there. And then you've got an instant restart. No, nope, just misses it. But that does become an E. And then this becomes a potential F. And that's what I'm saying. I can't, there could be an alternate count because the stochastics at 92% in the daily. I like this very much. But it fits the same category as that, the, the, I wouldn't say quite the bank sector because this is at all time highs. But it fits a category that says stocks that make new highs tend to come back to those new highs when there's some kind of a pullback. They stay there on the list for quite a while. So this looks great. Um, all I can say is money management says at this particular point at 237, um, take a tad off. Oh, and that reminds me, I must do a Vagio uh, from Michael. AVGO, I said I'd update it as soon as I got signals. And right now I'm getting signals. So um, this is ANET trading at 237.10, up 40 cents. Fabulous action. NACD is good. Stochastic is flat at 92%. On balance volumes a tad. Well, not a tad. It's quite a bit overbought. 
The nine is over the 14. The price is over the nine. But you can see the little pink line there. I've been including it for a pop the past few weeks. The three by three, and this is Dave White's, uh, like Dave White's, one of his favorite accessory tools. Nothing that he used all the time, but it's something that he grabbed when he started looking at positions that could change from up to down. But so far, nothing here says it's anything but um, somewhat overbought. But overbought, you can say overbought for a while. Now, what would I look for right here? As I said, maybe take a little bit off. But this would con completely change its character if in January, any time throughout January, if it closes, no matter how high it goes from here, but if it closes under 210.69, the low of the 4th of December, there's a complete change in the characteristic of the daily. we have to assess for the week years and there's a potential to doge a candle if this stays like this for another couple of days. All right, with that said, Dow's out, uh, down 51 and the S&P's up at 167. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians are preparing for this afternoon's, well, I've almost done it, uh, webinar. Coming up for subscribers, you can be a subscriber, check it out, Three twenty nine 29 days, and you get all my webinars and you get my calls, Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm always looking at IBRX. To be by, it's a little far away for me to see what it says. Um, IBRX uh, is trading at 491, up 65 cents. That's a really good move. That 200 period moving average of 578 uh, would be your first big resistance. And then the, the high in the sixes, uh, that would be at 631, uh, four something. Six, oh, 693, right there in the week of the 12th of uh, May. Uh, but most importantly, this particular pattern coming from the falling X like this says right there and right there, it says that this move to the upside, first of all, could do a one to one, uh, which would be, let me just do this. How should I do it? I usually do it from the low to the trend line resistance in the falling X formation. I'm just going to make it fat for now because we're looking at something that is moving quite quickly. Make that blue, blue. And then I'm going to make this one new and I'm making it green. Oh, that'll match the other green. I'll make it this green right here. So here's what we're looking at. That there should be a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside of the falling X formation. And you've got it exactly. Uh, in fact, not only have you got it exactly, it's gone a fraction above it. It's trading right now at 497. So that's your first move to the upside. Um, then you've got to look at the stochastic, which is at 86 and flat. The on-balance volume is a little bit overbought. The MACD's finally turned up. The nine-period moving average is good. This looks very good, and it says to me that the 458 level um, is going to be the full 50s, I should say, the whole full 50s, should be really strong support in any pullback, but it's a powerful move, and you've got the volume breakout, so I like that with the on-balance volume, but the vo on-balance volume itself is saying just a little bit overboard. Now, I've called this a B. I could have called this brand new A. That could be a more extensive B to a C. It looks to me like I should call that 200 period moving average there the starting point. If that's the case, that becomes, let me just do this. I I feel more comfortable with what I'm, what I'm doing now. It's a little bit more conservative. And I always say, be a little bit conservative and be pleasantly surprised if you are wrong because it does better than you thought. So that's the A, that's the B. There you go. Yep, it's in leg C. That fits exactly what I'm looking at here. There's your B and there's your C. Hey, good eye, Dan. And the other thing about this is, um, so now you're into the big red ugly candle of, of May. And that just says, uh, treat it with respect because that was ugly enough for whatever's happening now to say that's still in existence, whatever it was, it's, it's being healed. And the weekly chart has already gone to a D, look, A, B, C, D in the smaller context right here. This is your starting point here, A. That's B. I don't know if I'm going to do much of this at all in tonight's webinar. I'll, I'll Whatever I do, I'm going to write down and then I'll do it in greater detail over the next two days during my show. In terms of Chapman Wave notation, this is more looking at the big picture. What do you look at? You don't need much other than a couple of moving averages. To me, that's going to be really important. Very. I want to make it as simple as possible and as understandable as possible. And to say, where are we? It's a look forward. It's not a look back to say, oh, miss that, miss that. It's a matter of looking at this and saying, where are we and what can we do? And just make it as simple as that. There's your dreaded H. It held exactly, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So that's my count for the moment. Um, immunity via um, legacy. All right. Next thing. Mm -mm. Oh. It's actually no longer in existence. That big red bar was a problem with the third party contractor that is resolved. Part of why I bought the Lowe's anticipated resolution. Okay, so if this is the case, it is there. It is a bar that is there. So that whatever made this the issue, if that's disappeared and dissipated, that's really important. Look at the monthly chart. This is exactly what I'm saying. There are so many charts like this where the monthly looks absolutely, oh, you want to say, well, how can you touch a stock like this? Well, you look at the daily, 
and then you look at the weekly, and then finally you can get to the monthly. Monthly, we don't even have to discuss until it starts to trade in the 750 area at some point. So right now, it's the daily and weekly that we're looking at. Very good. Next question I had was, yeah, FDX. So how about this? So FDX, I didn't hear anything about it. I just saw the price. Didn't have a chance at all. I was really busy last night and also preparing for today. <clears throat> so I, I did hear that Federal Express was down uh, about uh, 12 points, 14 points. Now it's down 28 points, uh, down 10 percent. So this is Federal Express. So this B right here in the month, in the weekly chart, because the starting point is right there. Um, oh, isn't that interesting? This is the Chapman Wave Unconventional Flat Base Restart. I, I don't want to talk about it now. Just the 200 period moving average active support. Big, sharp pullback. That B, I can go back now. I have no choice but just say, gee, maybe that was an E slash B. Um, you have to do that. Yeah. I want correct notation in the Chapman Wave methodology. There's no such thing as cheating. No, this is what happened. The daily chart gave you a peak F, plunges down. I should sing the song of the peak F. I'm not going to do that. Because there was a hint. Um, I looked at this last night and I said, why? How? What was the hint? Well, the hint was, look, right here, the unbalanced volume turned down sharply um, from the high that was made on the 18th uh, to 285.53. A lower high the next day, unbalanced volumes turning down. MACD is just still very good, but turning down, uh, that's the stochastic. MACD was still very strong. And then look what happened. That peak F gave you a fantastic opportunity. I, I wouldn't have taken it. I would have had to wait another day, uh, not knowing that there was an earnings report. And look at that. So that says, now you have to consider this is very serious. To repair the damage, you need to see a weekly close above the midpoint of 260, somewhere in the 270s. And it's trading at 251. It's going to take a little while. And then look at UPS. UPS is... Um, trading United Parcel Service um, got repelled at the 200 period moving average and um, pulling back a little bit. But the weekly chart starting to improve. The United Parcel, Parcel Service says, gee, whatever happened to Federal Express, somehow or other, we are, we're doing much better <laughs> at the moment, price wise, chart wise. But it's not going to be great until it's at 157, it starts to trade in the 168 area consistently. That would be a really big thing for United Parcel Service. So, um, here's the point. Okay, okay. All right. So, now a couple of questions came in that I didn't get to from last night. Oh, yeah. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, if someone wants to look at... Um, yeah, I will do that. UEC and Microsoft, two positions up here. Um, I'll be back in a moment. Let me just put the Microsoft chat. Yeah. Lowercase h to a lowercase m. Is that the yeah, could be. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, boys, we're back. So, a question about uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft uh, makes an H pattern, and this is something that I, I just need to show you right now just so that it can make sense visually. Right here. This lowercase H pattern, called the dreaded H, if it holds the left side low, and it shows some strength, but not really, not great strength. It can often go from an H to a lowercase m. And then the big test of the left side low is, is important to monitor. Now, if that suddenly turns into um, a new high in this H pattern, not a new high from the, the starting point, but the arch formation, if it fails at a peak A, B, or even a C, but then you go to a higher high, that's going to be really important for two reasons, because it says now the H pattern is successful, and it can make a U-shaped pattern, a cup, sorry, a cup-shaped pattern that can go back to the previous high. So this is being monitored closely. Uh, it's up uh, $1.82 at 375 and that's just telling me that there's still residual strength, and that we cannot ignore um, the fact that at least... In this particular case, one of those Magnificent Seven is still holding really well um, at this particular point. Hasn't broken down, at least on the short term. The, the weekly chart still looks very strong. So what are the parameters to watch? A three, a close above 377.64, starts a leg, no, pushing above that starts a leg D, and that's really positive. And it says you could go, in fact, towards the high of 384. And a failure here says that if it starts to go to below 372.50, then it's probably going to make an arch formation once and then a second arch formation. That'll be a lowercase m. Then you've got to watch out for this left side low of 362.90. So, so far, it's just a sideways consolidation. A couple of things uh, we were looking at in terms of Apple. Uh, the other day, we were saying, Apple, I, I had no choice but to consider in the wave count that this was actually a leg B. Um, yes, I could be talking about the um, unconventional flat base restart. I, I'm not going to do that right now. There's a B with a doji, two doji candles. We have to see what happens here. I suspect there's enough strength just to pop once above 198 uh, 62, that was the high of the 14th for a leg C. I, I might have to change this, but in the meantime, the technicals are, are decent enough to say that it has enough strength just to pop one more, uh, one or two more times. And the, the monthly chart, 198.23, <clears throat> was the all-time high uh, in back in August of, uh, no, July of 2023, in the weekly chart. And uh, here it is in the cup formation, 
and it's it's broken to the upside, and it's a leg E slash B in the uh, monthly chart. I think it's a B. I think this is still acting really well. Uh, Amazon, let's just do Amazon quickly. Amazon all time highs. Uh, was back in July 2021 at 188.65, and then it retested it within five months, the same almost the same level, <clears throat> peak F, and then it broke down, went to 81, strong leg C in the monthly chart. And here again, I, I really think that this is probably a, a B. I, there's no other way. Look, the MACD's very strong stochastics at 95% in the monthly. The on balance volume is overbought. There's no question. Oh, the Dow just went positive, up five. <laughs> Very interesting. So here we are with um, Amazon in a new yearly high, not all time high, as we speak at 155.54. The, the buying just keeps coming in. And the buying keeps coming in because in this particular phase, this accelerated. I don't know if it's a climactic phase just for this move that started October the 27th, but uh, fear of missing out is right there. Any pullback uh, gets gets bought, and that's the reason why, as I said, we had a small split short. One position started uh, this morning and a very tight stop. I wouldn't be surprised if now it's down a little bit. Yeah, the, the index that we're following is still down for this particular a move has pulled back just a little bit from where we entered. So you got to be very careful. If you want to short, you have to have a very good reason, and you have to be you have to be picking the weakest of the bunch for at least a quick pullback. Next question came in, and that is <clears throat> ZS. Okay, ZS, um, Z scale. I think that is ZS. I used to have this completely notated. Uh, up to D, and now it's in an, oh, look at that. There's your, there's your D, there's your E. Oh, so many charts have got this exact pattern. It's like this right arm extension. So at this point, I'm going to call it an F, but it could be an F slash B. Just for the moment, I'll call it an F, not doing anything, because the stochastic's flat in 94. Everything's good. Mm -mm. And you've gotten to almost like a brand new, yeah, let me just do this thing. There's your peak D. It wasn't within three bars. One, two, three, it was in four bars. This is, has to be considered E, an F, and a G. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you right now is that the weekly chart um, is, let me just do this, G slash C. All right, okay. There's nothing wrong with this chart. It's absolutely fantastic, but just on a purely visual basis, you've almost done look almost done a one to one to the upside. Actually, talking about one to one to the upside. Let me just show you this just briefly. And this is the Dow. This is a Dow chart that I show subscribers every day. I had this as a one to one right there. That dash line said that's about the extension that it should go to. It went a little bit higher, and even today it's trading a little bit higher, even though the Dow right now is only down two. Um, but there's this cluster formation in the 120 minute chart that says there should be some resistance. So to sum it up, a Z scalar, I'm not sure whether you're in it. Can we please take a look? Yes, I'm looking at it. I All I can say, when prices get like this, the most important thing is I found, take a little bit off. It's just money management says it's had a spectacular move. There's nothing wrong with it, but money management says <clears throat> that a move such as this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we don't know about today, but seven days of higher highs and going uh, from basically the 180s to the 223 level, uh, the, the weekly chart has a little bit more tenacity because it's had a peak, had a pullback, and then broke above it. So that tells you you've got this tremendous support uh, around about the two two. Uh, 16 to 211 area and you're trading at 223. So I like it very much. This is exactly the area that fits the category of former absolute great winners going into highs in late 21, 2021, early 22, and then just tanked. This went from the three, maybe the 360 or 70 area down to under 100, and now it's back at 223, fabulous action. I wouldn't do anything more than take a little bit as part of money management. Uh, no position in it, oh, but you're watching it. Okay, so the way to look at this is 
you have to have two mindsets. One is, this is the move that is really powerful. I've just, I've got to get in, but I can't get anywhere close to the position that I wanted. So you have to get in with a very small position, maybe here at 223. I personally would have to, I would say, I just have patience. It's like a spectacular move. At some point over the next six weeks, it'll be probably in the 215 to 200 area. That's where you want to look at it. Um, and that's the way I'm looking at it right now. I'll be back. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, so um, we're looking at the, there we go. We're looking at the uh, Emity Futures. Now, finally, you've got your leg D. Isn't that interesting that it actually went all the way to a D in the five-minute chart? Uh, after looking like it was going to be very weak, there was a very nice bounce of the lows. I have to congratulate Tom O'Brien, the dinner this morning, saying, uh, watch the turnaround for the S&P going positive, which it did. Now, what's really important about this particular phase is that 
if we are in this acceleration climactic move to the upside, then you've got to expect a pretty serious uh, move, even if it's one of those four to six week sudden turn downs before the market can go back up again. But this, the, the way that it's rotated through each, I mean, I look, I looked at ZS, Zscaler, there are so many stocks that got hammered and have had a fabulous move. They don't have to give back more than a third in this any, any pullback coming because they've made, when you're listening to earnings reports, some of them have done well. So I'm going to be talking about this afternoon. I'm going to have a, a bunch of stocks. I'm not going to do as much on the technical side as I usually do because I've got all those webinars. I'll discuss each thing as it comes about. But I am looking at positions. I'm looking at what we have, what's working really well, uh, what we want to add to, and what we've missed that I would like to get into and how we can do that. And if you've missed a pretty strong week the upside, what do you do to get in now? Don't you want to go three times long a full position trying to catch it? cannot play catch up. You have to go sequentially, do it in a very logical way. And that's what we try to do. So it should be a